of this, the latest in a whole series of protests, which just show that after so many weeks, they can still bring out impressive numbers of people onto the streets of Bangkok, and also to show that they can shut down the city centre. And they've certainly done that. And they're being backed by pressure now from the main opposition party, the Democrats, who are also saying they will not accept the government's election timetable. They won't take part. They're going to boycott it. That's given real encouragement to these protesters. And they're keeping up this push for their demand that the Prime Minister must resign, that there must be a committee that reforms the entire political system before any election, before any choice of a new government. But the question is, we still don't know how that committee will be appointed. We don't know how much longer they can keep these protests up. There's a huge amount we don't know. And the government is still sticking rigidly to its timetable of a February election. All these repeated protests in Bangkok have achieved one distinctive thing. That is, a broad agreement in Thailand that the political system does need to be reformed. What they can't agree on is who should carry that out and who should run the country while that's happening. All of these people want an appointed council. They want this reform to take place before any government can be elected. That could take months, if not years. The government, of course, insists it has a right to call an election. That can't be resolved. And remember, all of these people that we see here, there are just as many people on the government side. They've not come to Bangkok. If they ever do, the good nature protests we've seen here would be a lot less peaceful. The government supporters say they've been patient up to now, but if the election is cancelled, then this situation will be a lot uglier than it is now.